Introduction In his thought-provoking book, Ego is the Enemy, author Ryan Holiday investigates the pervasive role ego plays in sabotaging our pursuits, relationships, and inner peace. Through historical anecdotes, case studies, and philosophical insights, Holiday makes the case that learning to dismantle our egotistical impulses is the key to overcoming obstacles, sustaining success, and living fulfilled lives. The book examines how an untamed ego fueled by pride, self-importance, and entitlement can undermine our goals and poison our interactions at every stage, from ambition and achievement to failure and reflection. Chapters provide frameworks for managing ego by promoting humility, self-awareness, and discipline in our moment-to-moment -moment choices. By curbing egotism, Holiday argues we clear space for courage, creativity, and connection to thrive. In addition to conceptual chapters, Ego is the Enemy contains focused exercises designed to target the ego's tricks. These interactive activities make introspection around our subtle egotistical habits more concrete. Through journaling techniques, behavioral adjustments, and conceptual reframing, the exercises both illuminate the ego's stealthy influences and strengthen our capacity for integrity by countering self-centered tendencies. Attaining Success, How to Think Holiday argues that when we attain success, our ego often grows out of control and we lose perspective. We start to believe our own hype and think we can do no wrong. This hubris leads smart people to make avoidable mistakes. To keep ego in check after reaching major goals, Holiday advises staying humble and disciplined in your thinking. Don't let success inflate your sense of self-importance. Remember that luck and help from others played a role. No one succeeds 100% due to their own awesomeness. Also, focus on the process rather than the prize. Enjoy the journey of working and learning, not just the end result. View success as a starting point to set new, ambitious goals. Stagnation and complacency kill progress. Moreover, just because you succeeded once doesn't guarantee future success. So stay hungry and humble. Don't rest on your laurels or assume you have a formula for achievement. Maintain a beginner's mindset, willing to learn and see flaws. Finally, build an inner scorecard to track your goals and standards, not external validation. Don't need awards or titles to feel worthy. Measure yourself against your own metrics, not what society dictates. Define what success means for you. Exercise, avoid self-promoting talk. In this exercise, Holiday challenges readers to avoid self-promoting talk for a week. This means refraining from mentioning accomplishments, telling boastful stories, name-dropping, discussing possessions as status symbols, and using any speech that could be construed as egotistical. The purpose is to become more self-aware of how often we self-promote to seek validation or feed our ego. It highlights our bad habit of inserting self-importance into conversations unconsciously. Holiday notes that avoiding self-promotion requires being tactical. Deflect praise and compliments by crediting others or focusing on the work itself. Downplay achievements as merely single data points, not self-defining. Frame setbacks as opportunities, not as some personal failure. You should also avoid negative self-talk while avoiding self-promotion. Self-criticisms can subtly fish for reassurance. Stay objective and humble without needing to lift or beat yourself up. During the week, observe when the urge arises to share accomplishments, make excuses, or seek approval. Notice when ego wants to diminish others' success as a defensive tactic. Each moment of awareness helps relinquish egoic tendencies. Ultimately, speaking with humility entails more listening, questioning, praising good work, and sharing credit. It builds connection through mutual understanding, not by competitive posturing. The goal is to break self-oriented conversational habits that isolate us. Attaining success, how to act. When you achieve major goals, it's important not to let success go to your head, argues Holiday. Watch your behavior closely so that you don't become arrogant. Ego can inflate dramatically if left unchecked. First, make sure to celebrate and enjoy successes, but not excessively. Cheer achievements appropriately then quickly refocus. Don't keep basking in glory or become complacent. Balance confidence with humility and hungriness for the next task. Furthermore, when speaking with others, resist the temptation to be pedantic, condescending, or brush off feedback. Don't act like the smartest person in the room. Stay thoughtful, ask questions and focus on understanding other perspectives. Also, double down on taking care of the little, unglamorous things in life and business. Do the dirty work needed behind the scenes. Don't feel too important for tasks perceived as beneath you. Stay dedicated to the craft. Likewise, rain in spending as success starts accumulating. 
avoid lavish purchases that feed ego by flaunting status. Tether lifestyle to reasonable needs, not climbing social ladders. Don't become a self-indulgent prima donna. Lastly, find ways to offer help to those less fortunate or successful. Mentor others, donate to causes, and build people up. Maintaining compassion and generosity counteracts ego inflation from achievement. Attaining success, how to interact. When experiencing major success, it's vital to stay grounded in how you interact with others, counsels holiday. Success can inflate ego and breed arrogance, damaging relationships. First, don't isolate yourself in an elitist bubble, surrounding yourself only with fellow big shots. Make time for those outside your social stature, especially old friends. Ask their honest advice, don't just boast. Relatedly, answer messages from ordinary people, not just VIPs. Don't become so exclusive that no one can access you. Stay approachable. Also, in interactions watch that you don't cut people off, stare at your phone, or act distracted. Making others feel unimportant feeds ego. Listen intently. Eye contact and presence matters. Likewise, introduce yourself to strangers simply, as an equal human. Don't lead with achievements. Let credentials arise organically, don't flaunt them. Judging yourself as better isolates you. Finally, balance confidence with humility. Be bold sharing ideas, but also open listening to feedback. Success makes opinions seem unquestionable. Stay flexible, self-critical, and cooperative with others' visions too. Exercise, find three people. In this exercise, Holiday instructs readers to find three people from their past to reconnect with after achieving success. The purpose is to ground yourself and realize no one succeeds solely on their own merits. We all depend on help along the way. First, reflect on your journey to success. Make a list of people who contributed meaningfully, teachers, mentors, employers, colleagues, friends, family members. Anyone who guided, advised, collaborated with, or supported you significantly. Next, pick the three most impactful people from this list that you have not properly thanked or shown appreciation towards. People you feel you owe gratitude for their help. Reach out to them directly if possible either in person, by phone, video call, handwritten letter, etc. When you connect, start by humbly thanking them for their contribution to your path, acknowledging specifics of how they impacted you. Share your accomplishments and how their investing in you was formative in getting there. Then listen. Allow them to provide any feedback, stories, or advice in response. Have an authentic, two-way conversation focused on their perspective. Keep ego muted. The goal is re-establishing lost connections and gaining important self-awareness. No one's success happens in isolation. We all have help along the way that we take for granted due to ego. Staying humble, appreciative, and connected to those who lifted you up keeps your head from swelling. It grounds you in reality. Maintaining success. After achieving major goals, many people lose their success because they stop doing the things that made them successful. They get complacent, distracted by fame, and lose their competitive edge. To maintain success long term requires avoiding ego inflation and actively fighting against entitlement mentality. Don't relax just because you've made it. Stay hungry, humble, and hardworking. Firstly, double down on the fundamentals, however basic that drive your excellence, even after hitting it big. Keep honing your craft daily through repetition and perfect practice. Commit to incremental progress through little wins. Secondly, maintain connections to mentors who will honestly assess your work and give feedback for improvement, don't surround yourself with sycophants. Actively collaborate with others who have authority to criticize you. Likewise, find ways to reinvent yourself before external forces require it. Disrupt your own comfort zones. Mimic the creativity that brought your initial success. Think long-term for continued relevance, avoiding complacency. Lastly, keep gathering knowledge and learning. Read books, take classes, have curiosity about diverse topics. The more narrow your specialty, the more broadly you need to self-educate to stay innovative and adaptable. Exercise, be a manager. In this exercise, Holiday challenges readers in leadership roles to complete a one-week, management cleanse, to rein in ego and improve their managerial skills. First, you must resist micromanaging your employees and team. Give them full autonomy and responsibility for their work. Don't hover over them or constantly check in. Show trust by allowing independence. Second, when employees bring issues to you, 
try responding with open-ended questions rather than solutions. Ask, what do you think you should do? Guide them to problem-solve on their own through inquiry. Don't always force your expertise upon them. Third, rather than direct harsh criticism at employees, sandwich criticism between genuine praise and encouragement. Point out issues while emphasizing the value they bring and your confidence in their abilities. Soften the blow to motivate improvement. Fourth, when employees do good work, give public and private praise describing specifics of what they did well. Recognize their efforts openly and to them directly. But balance with offering future constructive feedback too. Finally, admit your management mistakes to employees. When you make a poor decision or handle something incorrectly, own up to it transparently. Express you don't have all solutions as a leader. Show humility. The goal of this cleanse is developing employees' independent thinking and skills rather than showcasing your expertise. It counters authoritarian tendencies from ego by building up your team's confidence through inquiry, support, and admitting fallibility. Leading well requires humility. Recovering from failure. Experiencing major failures and setbacks can be emotionally crushing. However, Holiday argues that these difficult situations provide enormous opportunities for growth and improvement, if handled correctly. The key is managing your ego. Humiliating failures often trigger ego to act defensively and blindly. You might make excuses, blame external factors, or retaliate angrily to salvage self-image. However, this avoids honest self-assessment. Or ego might cause excessive wallowing in self-pity, preventing any forward progress. Instead, meet failure with humility, objectivity, and perseverance. First, take full ownership of your mistakes without making excuses. Accountability allows clear evaluation of what went wrong so you can improve. Also examine factors truly outside your control. Secondly, learn from those who criticize you. Listen sincerely to detractors and receive feedback openly, even if emotionally difficult. Set ego aside. Finally persevere through the long, unglamorous process of rebuilding. Have faith your efforts will lead to growth. Manage expectations but stay determined. Each small win renews momentum. Ultimately, Holiday recommends that her book's readers engage in these two exercises. Exercise, redefine success. In this exercise, Holiday challenges readers to rethink the definition and metrics we use to measure success. Society's standards like money, fame, status often fuel ego and create unrealistic expectations. We need internal metrics. He first advises writing down traditional markers you currently use to track success, things like pay raises, awards, publicity, social media followers. These quantify external validation. Now question if chasing these overly inflates ego by breeding comparison, self-promotion, and entitlement. Do these capture true success qualities like learning, creativity, relationships? Or do they just boost image? Next make two lists of new metrics to define success going forward. Integrity-based ones focused on character and effort. For example, honesty, patience, dedication, wisdom. And impact-focused ones based on how you better society. Like helping struggling folks, creating opportunities through jobs, donating money, or volunteering time to noble causes. Refer regularly to your new metrics when evaluating your direction. Are you progressing per standards of strong character and positive contribution? Or have old markers like money and fame distracted you? Essentially Holiday wants readers becoming more introspective and socially conscious when measuring success. Rather than chase superficial external validation which often harms integrity and community, focus on spiritual wisdom within and spreading compassion outward through service. This keeps ego in check and nurtures fulfillment. Exercise, don't hate. In this exercise, Holiday challenges readers to go one week without expressing hatred or ill will towards anyone, even privately in your own mind. The goal is recognizing how much ego fuels resentment and animosity. First, notice how often complaints about others, gossip, calling out people online, bitterness towards exes, jealousy over friends' success, dominate mental chatter. These grievances often serve ego more than justice. Catch yourself wishing misfortune on perceived enemies. Observe the emotional charge behind terms like despise, loathe, can't stand when discussing people. This reveals ego's self-righteous judgments and unhealthy attachment to being right. Also reflect on past hatred. Consider if detesting certain teachers, parents, exes kept ego's narrative alive rather than accepting reality. Ask if vilifying public figures was to feed your own importance. 
Attempt to see hostile situations from opposing sides. Develop empathy for why people act as they do. Recognize complexity in others' behavior and hurtful miscommunications. Perhaps ego prejudged. When feeling hatred arise during the week, pause and challenge the assumption. Question if ego exaggerates offenses. Then consciously send well wishes. Break cycles of resentment.